We're back for another episode with another financial planner, right? <laughs> like there's a lot of us and we get a bad rap every now and again. Uh, we just said this off camera, but we talk about how in our industry, there's a lot of people who think that the financial planners come from money, second generation, third generation, just money, 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 and it's all money driven. You guys know my path, but today we're going to learn about John Henry's path and who he helps in store in, at his company at Storymakers. So John, without further ado, why don't you talk to us about where you came from and why the hell you decided to jump into this industry? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Coy. And, and thanks for having me. Um, so I, I kind of fell into this, I, I guess. Uh, I didn't start off uh, as an investment advisor or a financial planner. Uh, started off more in mathematics and statistics initially as a professor um, and then kind of got pulled into the insurance world uh, as a model builder, actuary, data scientist. And it was, I was at Convert AI leading data science there and uh, my team knew that I was very interested in the markets and economics investments and so informally was talking with them and um, th thought you know th there's an opportunity uh, there's a lot of uh, while they had very good quantitative backgrounds and you know forecasting working with data uh, really didn't put any time or effort into uh, their own investments or portfolios. And so I thought there's kind of a, a niche opportunity here of, of folks like um, that, that were on my team. And uh, so it looked into what was necessary to be able to legally provide investment advice. And uh, that, that was really how I started. Uh, I guess things have uh, cha changed a bit from that b beginning because uh, of demand. Uh, initially, I thought I would only work with you know data scientists and quant type individuals, but um, and only for investments. Uh, what, what I quickly learned was there were other types of individuals that that wanted to work with me and on a variety of pro uh, types of problems. And so today, uh, I, I work with p people that aren't just data scientists um, and on a variety of types of uh, financial planning and uh, investment advising topics. Isn't it crazy how we go into this industry thinking, hey, yeah, this is what we're going to do. This is, this is it. And then all of a sudden, the needs and demands come from people. And I think that's a, a huge portion of what we do in understanding Kind of where our, our society is at right investments are important but people want that person to help them with the other stuff yeah um and what better way to have that person be the one who's also knee deep in all of their investments and their money to help them through those situations because they are so integrated when you transitioned i don't say transition but when you added those other services right because going from the investment side of things into this planning, into the other advice stuff, into being able to do courses and whatnot. What was the biggest transition for you as the advisor uh, to make that mentally? So I guess there was some, there still is, uh, so, some challenges on, you know, my own background and knowledge and expertise. Uh, I, I guess as a uh, math professor for, for many years and uh, b building machine learning models. Uh, you know, the, the, I feel very confident in that area. And so that you might call it imposter syndrome or or, uh, or another term, but re really feeling like I need to learn a lot more. I need to, uh, yeah, not, not have questions questioning myself or, or delays and being able to respond. And so that has motivated me to continue learning. And, uh, and it, it really feels good. I mean, um, I, I still like the kind of portfolio optimization and uh, that, especially the math uh, behind it, but, uh, you know, helping people uh, put together a roadmap for, for getting out of debt, um, something like that. Uh, 
and not just working with people with lo lots of money, but people who are, you know, five minutes out of school or, uh, or are in debt and, uh, you know, it being my own business, I also have the f enjoy the flexibility of being able to, you know, I, if it's somebody I uh, help for free or lower the price or, or uh, do what I need to do to be able to uh, be able to work with them all, also feels good. And I still have uh, a full time day job. Most uh, of my financial planning uh, is evenings and, and weekends. Um, so it, it, it takes some pressure off. Uh, I don't have anyone to uh, re report to or, uh, you know, certain metrics to, to meet. So it, it's really for fun. I mean, uh, of course, it's nice to um, make a few extra dollars. and um, But more than that, just getting to help people. I've got a lot of uh, teachers, professors, doctors, and nurses, and uh, people in my family helping people. My wife is a public defender helping uh, a, lo a lot of poor and uh, folks with uh, th their own challenges. And so we get together and everybody's sharing their stories uh, about helping people. And, uh, and and now I get to do that uh, as well in a way that I haven't before. And it's just really maybe for my own, uh, maybe it's kind of selfish, uh, but uh, it, it's it's really satisfying. I, I helped someone uh, recently who w was looking at this investment. He called it um, some someone he had met on an online dating service. This Web three crypto thing that I, I said I'll just tell you for free. Uh, like this is a scam. Do not put your money in this. He he was a, a teacher and you know was like close to putting his, his life savings uh, into this was really into the girl and um, w w was able to go through, do a formal due diligence, tell him all the ways in which, you know, this was not legit and uh, got to feel like I, I really helped somebody uh, avoid a catastrophic mistake. That gave me the chills. That, that story gave me the chills <laughs> because that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Right. We're not here to make a shit ton of money and, you know, be Wolf of Wall Street. Like, that's not truly what I believe our industry and the financial planning side is for. It's for those stories, right? Because mm -hmm. there is no, you can't track the, you, and you can't really, you could do the math, but you can't really track the fact mm -hmm. that the, the ROI on what you just did, right? Yeah. Um, yes, it's, it saved him from, you know, tens of thousands of dollars, whatever, how much money it was, mm -hmm. but the emotional toll the next steps to that, what happens after that. Those are all things that we can protect and help people with that doesn't have a true value to it, right? Yeah. It is literally valueless because it, who knows what it would turn into, kind of yeah. that butterfly effect type situation. Yeah. Um, it just one, one, one more detail on that. I mean, it, it was tough in the sense that uh, he, he didn't like what I had to say. I mean, I... I had to deliver it in a way that uh, was compassionate, but he looked at this as a real, uh, not not just financial opportunity, but you know something with a potential partner, and so 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 it was tough, uh, and it is at times telling people what they don't want to hear and uh, kind of being a a tough love maybe uh, idea, but and and yeah. We're, we're not currently working together on anything after that. So there was no kind of uh, longer term engagement. Maybe there will be down the road, but um, yeah. A anyway, I, I hope he's doing well. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'll hear. Absolutely. <laughs> you had brought up uh, machine learning. You had mentioned AI earlier. I'm going to ask two questions or kind of go two different paths. One, where do you believe that comes into play in our industry? One, is it already? And two, where do you see it going for our industry? Yeah, so I see more and more entities popping up to provide services, uh, embedding AI and uh, processes, and, and that's great. I, I see it in other fields as well. Um, 
you know, I, I feel like, it, as you know, I mean, there's a real human component. I, I maybe err on the side of caution of, of not wanting to automate things or, or uh, respond uh, or post things that, uh, that sound canned and, and not like my real voice. Uh, I, I guess I find it valuable in this context for getting some preliminary uh, information about a, maybe a new concept or, or topic um, just to get a quick uh, summary, some bullet points about, I don't know, something tax related or some retirement planning topic that's not uh, necessarily in, in my wheelhouse. And uh, then I can go from there and have a set of uh, things to look up and dig into. Um, so I, I think also summarizing meetings, I guess there's some, some value there and that's true for not just financial planners or advisors. Um, so yeah, that, that's a few, I mean, I feel like it's going to continue to, uh, progress. I, I, I teach this stuff and, and build it myself. Um, and it's just awesome. I mean, I love how how things are improving and um, yeah, different entities and businesses are popping up and building things differently, using different data sets, customizing things. Uh, so it's really exciting. Also, the, the performance is getting better. If you've ever tried these uh, uh, t teaching math and uh, some some real estate topics, where there's calculations involved, it was almost laughable when these first came out, how wrong they were and how confident they sound. So if, if you don't know how to do the math, you might mistakenly just take the output as truth. And I, I feel like they're really getting better in that respect, uh, which, which is fun. Um, yeah. Uh, Kind of trying to blink. <laughs> no, you're good. I, I, I truly believe specifically our industry and actually around the world in terms of what machine learning AI stuff can do for us is increase efficiencies in our operations, right? And provide a more custom feedback mechanism, right? Note taking, et cetera, summarization. Yeah. That's where I believe it will do the most specifically for our industry, but around the globe, I think for all industries is is that piece because that that piece takes the most time and effort and notations and all of those things yeah. that when we go back to do it like that's that's where our time is spent now yeah. it cannot do and it will never be able to do what you just told about that story of you know saying basically we'll vet this out and say no because of that because it won't be able to yeah. that's uh emotional driven things it is not a factual data point um, that I believe I don't think they can learn now eventually sure but the human element to everything that we do will always be there it's yeah. just going to make us more efficient so we're not wasting time you know whether it is doing more research and getting into the weeds is it note taking is it those things hmm. it's going to allow us to shorten those times so we can spend more time in front of people focusing on their emotions and learning about them truthfully as opposed yeah. to the other side where do yeah. you see it fitting into, I, I know there's machine learning investment stuff right now. I know there's hedge funds that are doing AI generation and picking stocks and things like that. Where do you see that ha uh, leading to both for like that retail person, hmm. but also institutionally within the markets? Do you think it starts to make different cycles and, and screw with what we're used to? Well, I mean, I feel like machine learning has been, uh, impacting markets uh, already for, for a long time. Uh, you know, we, we see things happening. I, I, I follow uh, different indices and uh, ticker symbols and, and things uh, closely. And, and you see wild things happen and wonder, you know, what is going on here? What is the reason for that? You think something should have gone up and some, economic data comes out and it goes the other way. So I feel like a lot of that is already algorithmic uh, driven. Um, I, I guess where I see an opportunity for r retail investors 
it's something I'm w working on myself is um, I've got a, a pipeline of data sources, tens of thousands of variables coming in, feature engineering, machine learning models being built and um, things being updated, uh, not in real time, but uh, every week. And so I, right now I have all that output for myself for, you know, what is uh, ha happening in the world. Uh, I'm being purposely vague. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, what kind of asset allocation might be optimal for a certain uh, performance metric. Uh, I, I, I do... Uh, I do think it's worth mentioning that, you know, in my opinion, there's a kind of oversimplification of uh, methodologies that, that are used for asset allocation, portfolio optimization. You know, this, what's called modern portfolio theory is 50 years old and uh, everyone learns to maximize this sharp ratio, which is not even in the top 10 performance metric in my opinion so i think there's room to improve there even for quant people um also it's these are largely not uh data driven in the sense they don't take as inputs a lot of uh, macroeconomic or, or geo demographic uh information it's just based on historical performance i'm, I'm kind of getting technical here <laughs> but uh where, where was I going with this? Oh, so the output uh, that, that I see, that uh, large as it might be, and a mix of structured and unstructured data, that could be, uh, that you could throw a large language model at that and have some you know, specific output, maybe starting with something off the shelf that uh, has some additional understanding like a chat GPT or uh, what, what are these others? And then add in a layer of uh, custom learning on your own uh, insights and analytics. And then a user could, could see that and, and interact with it, talk to it um, and use that. Uh, of course, there's still questions around uh, re regulation and, uh, and also just potential, uh, that things that could go wrong. Uh, I haven't, you know, made something like that available because I, I want to see, uh, I don't want them getting recommendations for, from a robot that I build that I, I could get in trouble if it's, uh, you know, something I don't agree with. Um, but, but I think it's an interesting opportunity and I already see some of the big um, entities making some, some things available. Uh, and I imagine that's, you know, in part how they're uh, building those technologies. Yeah, I agree. I also think there's a, a part of that, though, from the retail perspective of you got to understand that ins institutions are also trying to make money and they know from a data perspective of what retail usually does from an emotional standpoint. Let's take a GameStop situation, for example. Yeah. That's not a bunch of retail people making a bunch of money. What that is, it's ins institutions making money off of you. And you're going to end up holding the bag because you're trying to YOLO it or, you know, FOMO it and, and try to get whatever you can out of it. As a retail person, you're not looking for 10x, 100x, 1000x, right? You should Hopefully be looking not. for 1x, 10%, 20%, because yeah. that's where your realm is. You don't have the time. You don't have the resources to be competing with the institutions. And if you try to you're most likely going to lose. But in this scenario where we're getting these computer learning and AIs, I think it will help close that gap a little mm -hmm. bit for a little bit, right? Yeah. Because again, you don't have the billions of dollars pumped behind you to ensure that the institutions do that, right? And so I just want everyone to know that, like, stop trying to beat uh, all these people. Stop trying to see, hey, you know, someone did this trade mm -hmm. and they made it, you know, 100X on it. Well, that's not you. That's not realistic. That's more lottery stuff. Yeah, Stick to yeah. just the everyday stuff and focus on your own goals and your own time frame, not because someone, you know, got lucky. Uh, that, yeah. That's important to know. Yeah. And I think social media has a lot of, I, I'm not on anything except for LinkedIn, but, but, but from what I hear, I feel like there's a lot of people uh, get, giving advice, making recommendations. <laughs> Uh, with lots of followers and, and 
that's concerning to me that folks are looking to these kind of resources or, or people who, from what I hear, often have, you know, some, uh, they're really pitching, I don't know, NFT or some, mm-hmm. something that uh, maybe they've got a partnership with some, with somebody. Um, yeah, that that's concerning, I guess. Uh, but, you know, I, even this morning, I, for fun, looked to uh, chat GPT to uh, see how it would respond with some kind of investment recommendations for a, you know, balanced portfolio uh, for for a new investor. And it was pretty reasonable output. I mean, there were a couple of things that uh, I wouldn't have recommended myself, but um, already I feel like that's maybe safer than just turning to the internet, uh, for, for people starting out. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Yeah. And all it's doing is it, it's making investments uh, a commodity and not something that you have to hire an expert for. And I, I'm fully behind that. Where we come into play is everything else, right? That That's just part of this pie. The emotional yeah. side, helping them make decisions is where it comes into the planning side of things. Yeah. Where are you? So you obviously have a full-time gig and you have your you know, your business and planning. Where do you see your business going in in the near future? What goals or things do you have coming down the pipe that you're excited about? Well, I I guess as of today, uh, right, I I am I'm looking at how I have kind of changed my business model and and wondering um, if it was the right move or, or what might be the next adjustment or transformation. And, and and I say that because I feel like new clients I'm getting are more similar, uh, higher net worth, uh, maybe kind of working with me uh, as a bonus uh, or, or for fun, we get together and talk about the markets and economics and, and that's great. I enjoy it. I've got a lot of a lot of these folks are uh, interesting, and I learn from them, uh, pr- professors and uh, successful f- people. But uh, but what I feel like this new model, I, I changed to a subscription-based model, and uh, people can book as many meetings with me as they want. Uh, my thinking there was that that would make things where I could work with people that don't maybe have a lump sum to to pay on day one and they can, you know, unsubscribe at any time. And I thought that would bring in more uh, folks that maybe have never been able to work with somebody or were struggling financially. Uh, But, but I don't know that I, uh, that I was right about that. And so uh, to be honest, I'm not sure. Um, You know, I I would like to continue to uh, help people, especially, um, uh, those that might need it the most, uh, but, but, but it's, it's tough, uh, the, the economics and the time commitment. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe we can talk offline and maybe you'll have some ideas for me. Really, this is all experimental for me. Uh, you know, I've never started a business and I'm still figuring out how things work with marketing and finance and, uh, you know, building a website all of these but 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 i'm having fun and uh and growing uh, adding folks um i i've reached or maybe now past uh br- breaking even kind of month over month and and that's fun so yeah that's just we'll the re- that's the real side of it uh I, I a couple episodes ago i talked about no one has their shit together i think that's the biggest thing in this world when we grow up as adults we realize uh-huh. No one has their shit together, right? No one has it all figured out. There's always something they're working on or questioning or, you know, for you on the data, the data science thing of everything, it is, it literally is a science. Like we're trying to give and take and figure out what's going to work and what's not going to work. And I, I want people to understand that, right? That that's, that's how your life is as a normal person. Like that's what you're going through too. And then as business owners, there's about 16 other layers on top of it that we have to deal with. Uh, you know, for example, like a website for me, my website went for some reason, visits went down the last two months compared to year over year. Why? No clue. Right. Mm -hmm. But we have to figure those things out. 
And I, I think it's very important for people to know how these fee things work. And if they go to Google or any of the social medias, our industry loves to fight each other about what model's the best. Hmm. I don't really care what model's what. I don't charge you AUM. I go more subscription-based as hmm. well. Um, and what I've learned is people don't gravitate towards it yet because they don't know hmm. that you can do that, right? They don't yeah. know this new model. Uh, I know it's been around for a while, but from a marketing standpoint, they're used to what all of the institutions and big media are talking about, and that's AUM, percentage of yeah. something, right? Yeah, Percentage yeah. of that. And that's not it anymore. There's a lot more of us that are going, we're going to fit into your cash flow. Pay us monthly. We're going to be here for you regardless of how many assets you have. And yeah. that's a different philosophy that just the mass people don't know yet. Yeah. And I, th I kind of feel like maybe some of the challenges from a psychological perspective is with a subscription, you know, maybe people want to see value, you know, every, every month. Uh, if, if I have a Netflix, I, I can watch th things every month. And, um, it, you know, it might be once a year or four times a year uh, where, where there's a, a life event that's happened or, or something that's happened where you can help somebody. And, and maybe that's a, a high dollar amount, but then a couple months go by and, and you don't, um, they don't see that. Uh, it might be. That might be harder for folks to think about having a subscription. Oh, sorry, my phone's ringing. Yeah, it does. But, I mean, that's the psychology behind it. But that's why we all have to talk about it more. Like, it has yeah. to be marketed more, and that's a fundamental difference in change, yeah. which is, I, I think, the best type of change for people in themselves because they mm -hmm. need to have that person who, no matter when or what happens, they can go to you and either get advice or know and trust you that you're going to go do the research or vet out or whatever it is mm -hmm. to really help them in the right decision as opposed to Google or TikTok or Instagram or whatever the bullshit's out there, right? Yeah. So, yeah. all right, as we get to the end of this, I always ask every guest this one question. What is one thing you want to leave all of the listeners with in order for them to take that first step or that next step mm -hmm. in moving forward in, this, in their wealth journey? I, I guess uh, I, I know you're you're an athlete uh, like myself. Uh, I did football, wrestling, baseball, uh, mixed martial arts, fighting. After that, and uh, you played football. W were there some other sports as well? Yeah, story? I was a baseball, football player. Okay, uh, ran a little track till I tore okay. Miami. But outside of that, yeah, for sure. Yes. Yeah, so so I, I feel like there's a lot of uh, similarities with. Uh, you know, sports and mindset and make, making progress w with, w with many things, but, you know, for, uh, financial planning or retirement planning, um, it, the, the first thing that came to mind when you asked that is, is just get started. Um, you know, f find someone, uh, or, or something that, uh, that where there's some trust, and get started knowing that that, that you're green and uh, that there's a lot to learn, but you know there can be some uh, fast and easy value uh, from learning and working with someone, a mentor, an advisor, even if it's an hour, um, just to get started. And, and I'm thinking about my own kids who are are now. Uh, 20 and 21, but when they were teenagers, uh, I started planting seeds and talking about investments and they got a little Robin hood account and they had a few ticker symbols and we monitored this. And, um, so something could be very basic, but the, the mindset and the habit, uh, that you can get in like, like sports, I, I'm thinking of getting somebody to, you know, start working out, eating better, just small things that can make a big impact for, you know, longer term success. Uh, I guess that would be my recommendation is to, to lear learn and keep learning and uh, be, be humble. Uh, and that goes for everybody, not just people starting out. Um, but to, to get started, to, to jump in, not, you know, with, with your life savings into something. 
high risk, but uh, yeah, dip, dip your toe in and uh, and, and get started. Uh, the, as as you know, the sooner people do, uh, the the better in the long run. Think about your future self and uh, do do them a favor by by getting started today. Absolutely. So get started today. You heard it here first from John Henry. <laughs> yeah. It's a lifelong journey. Um, life's a journey, but your wealth is also a journey. There really is no getting uh, rich quick scheme out there that works. It's an everyday evolution of working on yourself, working on what your wealth does. And like you had said, it's just very similar as working out. If you have a strong body, a strong mind, you're going to have a strong fiscal or a wealth journey as well. So yeah. just take that first step. Uh, there's a lot of us here for you. Yeah. And, and you know, the name of my business, Storymakers, uh, is, what inspired that was thinking about your, your future self. And uh, of course, we all want to have fun and make stories today and tell those, have adventures. And I encourage people to do that. But uh, also, also think about, you know, things you want to do in the future and setting yourself up to be able to do that. Uh, have patience and dedication and you'll, you'll thank yourself uh, in the future. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate having you on. Uh, we'll have you on again, of course. But if you, anyone has questions or comments or whatever that, I always ask one thing on every episode. Just reach out and communicate. You're on LinkedIn, John. I'm everywhere in social media. If you have questions, you want to learn, you, whatever it is, you know, reach out to us. We're here to direct you. We're here to help you with advice or at least point you in the right direction so you can take that next first step. Yeah. Thanks, Dwayne. Program was sponsored by Black Mammoth. Any awards, rankings, or recognition by unaffiliated third parties or publications are in no way indicative of the advisor's future performance or any individual client's investment success. No award, ranking, or recognition should be construed as a current or past endorsement of Black Mammoth. Information regarding specific awards, rankings, or recognitions is available on the Black Mammoth website www.blackmammoth.com All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. Investment strategies such as asset allocation, diversification, or rebalancing do not assure or guarantee better performance and cannot eliminate the risk of investment losses. There are no guarantees that a portfolio employing these or any other strategy will outperform a portfolio that does not engage in such strategies. This broadcast should not be construed by any client or prospective client as a solicitation to affect or attempt to affect transactions and securities or the rendering of personalized investment advice due to various factors, including changing market conditions. The information discussed in this broadcast may no longer be reflective of current positions or recommendations. While information presented is believed to be factual and up-to-date, Black Mammoth do not guarantee its accuracy and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. The tax and estate planning information discussed is general in nature and is provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal or tax advice. Listeners should consult an attorney or tax professional regarding their specific legal or tax situation. Past performance is not indicative of future results.